you catch that? I really hope you didn't because it would be really embarrassing. Today I'm gonna break down this scene I made a while ago and through this animation I plan to share the most important factors and techniques you can apply to loop your animations in Blender seamlessly. Before I start, I quickly want to apologize for disappearing for so long but I finally got my stuff together and I'm planning to dedicate all of my waking hours to this channel. I've also started a short video series where I take less discussed topics related to 3D in general and explain them in under one minute as concisely as I can. I've also restarted my Patreon page where you can get access to exclusive tutorials, get detailed personalized video feedback on your artwork, find the source files to all of my videos, get licenses to unreleased music and sound effects that I personally create and use, and much more. With all of that said, let's get into the video. Most of my animations start as a vague idea or emotion I want to get across and I like to translate that into music first because it has the lowest barrier to entry for me and it always serves as a backbone for everything I create. The music is actually pretty simple. There's the piano chords and melody. A counter melody that adds a lot of dynamic into the mix. And finally, there's this simple female choir, which adds a feminine touch and helps set the mood for our character. Everything together sounds something like this. And the feeling I wanted to create was kind of like how the sound of rain is objectively chaotic, but we perceive it as peaceful. You'll notice that we've already started with the first step when it comes to looping animations. A looping background track. With the BPM set to 110 and the track being 8 bars long, we can see that the track is 13 seconds and 9 centiseconds long, meaning that we can write it as 13.09 seconds. This length is going to be very important in setting up our timeline. So let's say we want our final animation to be in 24 FPS. To calculate the length of our timeline, we're going to multiply 24 by the length of our track, which is 13.09, which brings our result to 314 frames. And that's going to be our end frame for our timeline. You're going to have a much easier time if you're track ends at a whole second, but I don't think the 9 centisecond difference will be that noticeable even if you were to round it off, as we'll be applying the other more important principles for looping animations. For a rough block out to start off, I brought in this botanic tree as a placeholder for now, and also this free swing model from Sketchfab that I simplified and edited its proportions to fit our scene better. For our main character, I used the human generator add-on to generate a female character very quickly and played around with the sliders till I got what I imagined. Links to these add-ons will be in the description in case you want to check them out. I posed her sitting on the swing holding onto the ropes and parented her to the swing. To control the swing, we can create an empty in between the ends of the ropes above and parent the swing to this empty. And now if you move around the empty object, everything else will follow. Since a swing's motion is pretty much oscillatory, meaning that it reaches the highest point on either side and the time interval is fixed, we can animate it using curve modifiers. Just add a keyframe at the start and end for its rotation, head to the graph editor and in this case we'll add the built-in modifier from the side panel to the Y axis. This will create a wave pattern like this. Before we proceed further, the most important principle that you need to understand is that to create a seamless loop, the starting and ending frames must be identical or transition smoothly. In this scenario, whether you use sine or cosine from the built-in modifier, you need to make sure that the value in the starting frame matches the ending frame. So if it starts at a crest or a trough, it must end with a 2. The most important value that determines that is the phase multiple value, and this needs to be a certain value depending on the length of the timeline to make sure that it starts and ends at the same part of the wave. Suppose the phase multiple value is x, then the value is going to be 2 pi divided by the length of the timeline, which is 314 in our case. If you calculate this, it'll bring the value to be around 0 0.02, which you can copy and paste into the phase multiple, and it'll always loop. If you want to speed it up, you can multiply this value by an integer and it'll speed up without losing the loop. Once this is set up, then you're free to play around with the amplitude to change the range of the effect and you can also change the phase offset to start at a different part of the cycle. When I was first doing this, I pretty much eyeballed the phase multiple, but I strongly recommend that you do this simple calculation first to avoid any headaches. You can apply the same principles to animate the legs swinging as well, making sure to change the phase offset such that the legs move first and then the swing follows, which is more realistic. And you can also create a small offset between the legs to add to the realism as well. For some smaller parts where you might want to add motion, such as the knots at the bottom of the swing, you can add a simple deform modifier 
modifier set to bend and animate the angle value. I added a noise modifier in the graph editor to animate it and it doesn't really matter if it loops perfectly since it's a small and random motion. To build out the rest of the scene, I used the botanic add-on for the trees and grass, the free IV generator for the IV on the trees, a and t landscape add-on that ships with Blender for background hills and I also downloaded some pictures of mountains and trees, made the backgrounds transparent and placed them as background assets to break up the silhouette and give the sense of a larger scene. It also helps to add some foreground elements to help with the sense of depth in the scene. The great thing about Botanic is that you can apply animation to all of your trees and vegetation with a single click and it also supports looping animations. Now for the rain, I tried using the bagger rain generator first because it's super realistic, procedural and also gives us the option to loop. But it proved to be too heavy for this scene so I decided that I'll add the rain in post in After Effects instead. I did a few test image renders and edited them in Photoshop to get an idea of the final result and see if I was heading in the right direction. After a lot of revisions on what could be the second subject in the shot, I finally decided to add an old grand tree in the background which felt like a great storytelling element to me and the composition felt way more interesting and balanced. I also decorated the swings with vines and flowers which I think added a lot of character and personality to it. For the lighting, it was a simple volumetric box with a great animation but I also added a huge area light illuminating the tree slightly in a warmer tone. Now you might be confused about the absolute lack of clothes on our character but it's just because I wanted to build a satisfactory scene in Blender first before working on the clothes in Marvelous Designer. If you've used Marvelous Designer before, you may know that it's best to have our character in a neutral A pose while creating the clothes and then transition into any other pose or animation. So I extended the timeline by 24 frames, offset all of the animations on our character by 24 frames, added an A pose keyframe at the start and used the restrict frame range feature in the built-in modifier to transition from the A pose to our animation. Then I exported the character as an alembic file and brought her into Marvelous Designer. Now if you're interested to learn my workflow from Blender to Marvelous Designer and back, you can watch this video on my channel that goes over that in just 10 minutes. I also have a super detailed in-depth guide to Marvelous Designer coming up soon where I'll go over the entire software, all the tools and settings and interoperability options. It'll be compressed down into less than 3 hours with a step by step example at the end so you can follow along and have a finished outfit by the end. I'm constantly posting work in progress and behind the scenes content on my Patreon page related to this insane video that I've been working on for months and you can actually view each chapter there as soon as I finish editing them. For this video though, I'll be skipping the creation process of the garment and instead talk about how I created the loop. After draping the clothes onto our character and recording the simulations, we get this track of all keyframes for our garment. To make it a loop, the first step is to make sure that the start and end keyframes are the same. So we're going to copy the first animation and paste it on top of the last animation to replace it. But now the transition is too sudden. So we're going to go back a few frames and delete them, such that the linear interpolation between these two keyframes does the work for us and the transition looks smoother. If it ends up looking too robotic, you can hit the simulate button somewhere in between this transition and add keyframes to break it up and make it look more natural. I'll be talking about this in greater detail in my upcoming ultimate guide to Marvelous Designer, so make sure you subscribe and check it out when it comes out if you want to dive deeper. Once I was happy with how it looked, I brought it back into Blender and adjusted all of the offsets again and it looked pretty cool. After a few tweaks, I rendered it out and into After Effects where I added the rolling fog using fractal noise and only keyframing the first number of the evolution value which means the number of cycles of evolution. So setting it to 6 will mean that it'll go from 0 to 360 6 times over. I made 3 versions of this and layered them in the background, midground, and foreground. For the rain, there are three layers as well. And I made a mask out of the original render by playing around with the levels to isolate the background and midground and use them as luma mats for the different rain layers. Also the creation process of the rain is pretty simple, it's just the CC rainfall effect. Since the rain is pretty subtle and random and doesn't have a discernible look at where it starts and stops, we don't have to concern ourselves with perfecting its loop. Now we can bring in our music and rain sound effects and render it out, sit back and watch it loop for eternity.